Hey everybody, my name is Chris Llewellyn and I am the Tippa County Development Foundation Director. I'm a lifelong resident of Tippa County and I'm happy to call Tippa County my home. We at the Development Foundation know that we must ensure that Tippa County offers a wide variety of ways for our citizens to make a good living and have a great quality of life here. We know that we must move Tippa County forward into a future that causes our high school graduates to want to make Tippa County their home and to know that they can have a good life here. We believe that the only way for Tippa County to move forward is for us to move forward together. It will take all of us to ensure that our children and our children's children have a great place to call home in Tippa County. In this series of interviews, released weekly this fall of 2024, you'll hear from some incredible people living in Tippa County. Some of these folks never left home, some left for a while and came back, and some moved here as adults. We wanted to let you hear their reasons for choosing Tippa County as their home and their hopes for the future of Tippa County. The interviewer is Mr. Austin Hamilton, a lifetime citizen of Tippa County, Austin currently serves as the career coach for Ripley High School and served last year as the Walnut High School career coach. We thought he would be the perfect person to talk to our group about their hopes and dreams for their hometown. If you enjoyed this interview, please check back weekly to listen to each new interview and share them with a friend. Let's move forward together and make Tippa County the best that it can be. Um, I'm here today with Reverend Jody Hill, yeah. uh, man, and I, I don't think I have to explain much on him. He's a very well-known guy um, across the board, but it would, would just getting started, uh, Reverend Hill, what would, what's your current position? What are you doing right now? Because I know you've worked a lot of different jobs, a lot of different sectors, yeah. but what are you doing right now as, as, as we speak? Yeah, I'm, uh, thank you. It's good to be with yes, you, sir. Austin. I serve in bivocational ministry. i Pastor here at Ripley Presbyterian Church. I'm in my 11th year here now at uh, RPC. And then also I work at uh, Memphis. I'm president of Memphis Theological Seminary. Okay, so. yeah, yeah. And we were just talking off air just a little bit about that. Um, how, how is that going, by the way? Now, when I, and I say that because... When I first really got to know you, you were yeah. where, what at Blue Mountain? You were over. Yeah, I was vice affair? president of community relations. Community relations. So dealt significantly in fundraising sure. and just kind of representing the Absolutely. school within the community and the churches. Now, how many? I'm sorry, I think how many years have you been at MT? At I started at MTS in 2020. So wow, I started and. Two months later, the pandemic wow. kicked off. So. Wow. Well, we could go on and on about oh, that. Man, but that's but right. with that being said, you know, um, you, you obviously fit the category. I know we talked a little bit before yeah. we got on. Um, so you would f obviously fit the category. You grew up here. Now, am I correct in yeah. saying you graduated from, grew up, graduated from Faulkner, yep, correct? that's right. Um, and then uh, moved all, obviously, uh, if some of you probably already know, he played football at Ole Miss, correct? Yeah. Am I correct on yep. that? Because you're also an author. Uh, yeah. I've read your book, The Chucky Moans Effect, all correct? All stuff going Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, you, you're a jack of all <laughs> trades, man. I'm going to have to hit you up later. But anyway, uh, but with that being said, uh, you moved off and now yeah. you're back. Um, right. As I don't know who told me, but you just recently built in Faulkner, correct? That's right. Man, back to your hometown. So, how, um, what are some characteristics of uh, Tippa County you would highlight? Maybe cost of living or um, just some things that you would you would want someone to know, maybe even um, some some uh, essential traits of yeah. Tippa County. If someone was asking you, what would you say about Tippa County? Yeah, uh, so I've lived in a couple of different urban settings. Sure. I uh, lived in uh, Memphis for a while mm -hmm. back uh, when our kids were a little younger, and then in St. Louis. So okay. uh, certainly that worked out good being a Cardinal fan. And oh, wow, I didn't know you are a Cardinal fan. In, I like even more now. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. We got to take in a lot of games, but... One thing that we really missed and then appreciated coming back sure. home, it was the small town connectedness mm -hmm. of Tippa yeah. County. I mean, having a local bank, local physician, exactly. people that you know where uh, you do business with. And that's such a great gift mm. that I think Tippa County sets apart from 100%. someone who's living in an urban setting where... You're just kind of one among many, and, exactly. and here you're like one of a family. You know, I say this often. I say, you know, you are one conversation in Tippa County from having 
your family physician, yeah. your your banker, your um, construction team. I mean, you are one yeah. conversation away from having everything you need, optometrists, sure. you know, and, and two, you know, what's, what's also incredibly interesting about that piece that you just said, you know, Mr. Kyle Smith mm -hmm. gave me my first loan at 23, wow. and he gave my father his first loan at 23. Yeah. So he, it, won't, he won't give me a loan. <laughs> I, know, well, I'm like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how much pool I got with him. He, he, anyway, I, I, know when, I know when he calls, either he's asking me a question about the new community of excellence or sure. maybe a bills. Nut. So I'm hoping to either one anyway. But with that being said, um, once again, just kind of on that note, that that hometown feel, um, that's a that's a piece that um, I think oftentimes is overlooked, especially yeah. with young people, because they're always thinking, oh, I want to move to California, or sure. I want to move to Austin, or yeah. the boom in places. Um, kind of speak to that. Maybe even, um, is your wife from here? She's from Boonville, so yeah, the, North the, Mississippi the area. The region. Yeah. So that's even right. too, like, speak to that on the family side of moving away. And, and don't get me wrong, your kids... Went to Corinth, correct? Am yeah, I right on? Right. So still in North Mississippi. Yeah. Um, so kind of speak to a little bit even to like, um, I guess you would say the peace of knowing, sure. like I know all these people. I know where my kids are going to school. Yeah. Um, my wife has family, friends, and all of those things. Maybe yeah. kind of what are what are the advantages of that? I know we said the physician and thing, but what mm -hmm. are some other like just, just, just knowing when I lay my head on my pillow at night, I, yeah. I know these people. Yeah, so we moved back from St. Louis in 2013. Okay. And we moved to Corinth at that time. We're close to family in that area. And uh, then I eventually went to work at Blue Mountain sure. Christian University sure, now. Sure, sure, sure. And while I was pastoring here at RPC. And then when I assumed the presidency at Memphis in 2020, mm -hmm. and a lot of people say, bless your heart, you started in the pandemic. And I say, hey, no, it's no matter how bad I mess it up, I can always blame it on the pandemic. So <laughs> COVID got thrown thing. on the bus yeah, a lot. <laughs> that's right. Um, but as Manya, my wife and I sure. were uh, kind of determining where do we want to settle. Sure. You know, now uh, I'm in the urban setting. She was working at Corinth, so okay. that was part of our our move too. And okay. it was really her suggestion that we get back home, back. And basically, wow. we built in my parents' pasture That's awesome. right there in Faulkner. And I think we're going to see more and more of this, uh, the too. commuter lifestyle, because it takes me about an hour and 10 minutes. So that's not mm -hmm. driving like a preacher. Well, maybe it is driving like a preacher. <laughs> but, uh, like Randy Hamilton. Maybe pushing yeah, 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 it a little yeah, yeah, yeah. bit. But, uh, you know, it's so nice to be able to be in sure. a quiet uh, community, the yeah just where we can sit on the back deck and, you know, watch the sunset and have just a can't good put a price on space. That. You really can, Austin. And I think uh, for young people growing up now, choosing and considering a career, sure. the opportunities are there. We mentioned the pandemic. I mean, we're in a uh, world now where communication, everything's at the touch of the phone. Sure. I mean, we're doing this interview over an iPhone. Oh, exactly. And it will be streamed to whoever yeah, wants to see it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so much of my work, even at the seminary, can be remote. Mm -hmm. So, I encourage people to think, even if you want to have a uh, working in an urban sure. environment, we're in a commuter world. So You, uh, you know, it's so crazy. One of the there, talks yeah. I do with our students at the school, I tell them, I think Ripley. I, I I think Ripley is the most strategic place Absolutely. in Northeast Mississippi. Yeah. I said, man, I can wake up tomorrow right. and have breakfast in Memphis. I can wake up and have breakfast in Birmingham. I can wake up and have lunch in Atlanta. I can wake up sure. and have lunch on the beach in Destin, or I could wake up and drive to Memphis and be exactly. in California all the way out west by what three four o'clock. That's right. But what you can't get, I can I can enjoy all the things you have. Yeah, I can even work there in a sense. Sure, that's right. But what you can't guarantee. Is that peace of mind? Yeah. That that small town feel, that cost of living, being on your grand or your parents or yeah, grandparents' sure. farm. I mean, all those things that we so uh, we so value. Um, it, it, we we are in a world now where it doesn't have to be an either or; it can be a both and. That's right. Um, so. so, with that being said, uh, I, what are some other just traits? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you know, I mean, you've written a book. Um, so you're a man, you, you, you got some adjectives in you, if, huh. I, if I could say. Um, so, man, if somebody was like, say you were in St. Louis, for yeah. instance, and uh, somebody was like, hey, where, where did you grow up? What was it like? Mm -hmm. um, what are some just some adjectives you would describe about Tibba County? Yeah, I think it's the friendliness, hospitality. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you know, a, a unique thing about Tibba County, too, mm -hmm. I mean, to be a small town environment, small setting, I mean, it's 
pretty cosmopolitan for a small town with the uh, arts that we have sure. here and everything. The theater that provides a lot of opportunity. Oh, absolutely. To people to kind of come out of themselves and uh, the commitment to uh, downtown, the revitalization mm -hmm. there. And, uh, you know, I think that there, there is a spirit of we're in it together. And, and yeah. I, I encourage us all to, uh, you know, buy locally, uh, live locally. Sure, and, and sure, help sure, sure, sure. Pour life and uh, economics into those who poured life into us. Uh, that's, that, so. that's, a, that's a great piece. And one of the, one of the things that's often come up uh, in these conversations, you're the mm -hmm. third conversation is, you know, for younger people, they often ha um, say, well, there's nothing to do here. Yeah. And, and, I, and I always say, well, first of all, there's more to do here than you realize. Yeah. And second of all, you don't realize how far it's come in 25 years. Yeah. See, now 30, I remember when there was, a, I, I, like you said, I would have never dreamed at 10 years old. And I'm not trying to, to tout Miss Elizabeth up, but I know, because I know there's another, a lot of pieces to that sure. main street, um, including Miss Marcellus who's doing this. Yeah, I think about sure. Miss Grady, and I think about others who poured their heart on, into mm -hmm. that downtown, that uh, Ripley yeah. Main Street. I couldn't have dreamed when I was in high school it looking like it does now. Some of the things that are offered now, mm -hmm. and even like, um, even I've seen some of uh, the things in the future that are planned, some of the office yeah. space um, in that Ripley Main Street. Um, I, it really encourages me so when young people say that, I always say just give us some time it's That's coming right. we're not gonna move like Nashville we're not gonna move like Austin it's never gonna be like that sure. but we are we are seeing more and more innovation and more and more partnerships across the board um, where people are saying I, I can hear Chris Llewellyn right now say we we don't have time for people to be on an island anymore yeah we, we need to come together with our resources and see this change for the betterment of the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. Well, now in wrapping, in wrapping up with the with the football interview. Now, if you want to continue uh, to watch this uh, uh, conversation, we'll go a little bit longer. We can talk all day. We're oh both my preachers. Oh so. my goodness. Anyway, we we could. Um, and I and I don't I don't feel I'll be a stroke anybody's ego. Yeah. I've always I enjoyed your book. I read it when it first came out um, when I was in high school. And uh, always from afar, I've always been encouraged by how the way you carried yourself and yeah. things of that nature. But with that being with that being said, um, I know that there is a whole host of people right now uh, that you know I, I, that grew up here, mm -hmm. that loved it here, um, but for whatever reason, especially you know twenty thirty years ago, like we're saying uh, that that remote work wasn't a thing. Sure. Maybe even a commuter thing really wasn't a thing. Um, but now with the fiber optics that we have here, we have, we have incredible Wi-Fi and with 15 coming through and connecting and, and, and more interstate, more ability. Um, what, what would you say to that, I don't know, 35, 40 year old? Um, I know we've kind of hit on this, but I think this is such a, a big piece um, for our economic development and understanding uh, the opportunities here. What would you encourage, what would be a word of encouragement to them to say, hey, like I've been, I've been to St. Louis. Yeah. It was great. We love yeah. the Cardinals, and I've been to Memphis. It's great. You know, love, lo, lo, love the Grizzlies. Yeah. But I couldn't, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else now. Sure. And I think my wife Manya says it better than I do. I mean, every our wives day, often do. Yes, but anyway, yes. I mean, yeah. she says I love it. I'm, I'm back home. I'm in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you said, I mean, when you're in an urban setting you're going to have a 30 minute 45 minute drive just to go out to eat or something like that. Oh my goodness. So we're here we are on the outskirts and, <laughs> and you can go in so uh the transportation's not really so much of a deal yeah, exactly. and to give you an example of and to encourage our students and, and those who are considering mm -hmm. careers just a few years ago I was in the equipment industry uh, sure, yeah. uh selling and yeah. and uh, trading construction equipment heavy equipment. And I was sitting in an office in Faulkner, Mississippi, and across from me was a guy from Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, and we were he was on the phone with someone from Japan, and we were putting together a deal to send equipment to Russia. Wow. So, I mean, here you are in, in the information age, and, yeah. and you can make things happen. Sure. You can still serve uh, your yeah. community. Sure, and yeah. Take pride in what we have here. We have something special. We really do. Together. We really do. Well, so with that being said, last question um, uh, on the uh, on the football interview at yeah. halftime. 
with that being said, you've seen a. I mean, I'm assuming Tippa County doesn't look anything like it did when you yeah. were in school, um, like most people. But with that being said, we want we want to capture and keep and hand down a lot of traits about Ripley: hardworking, mm-hmm. dedicated, family oriented, um, all of those things that we we would want to continue going. Um, but with that being said, and we've got, we, it means a lot of these things have come up, um, but we don't want to fossilize. We don't want to just yeah. say, we're going to preserve this Ripley as it is mm-hmm. now. We're never going to, we don't want to see a change. No new people, no new things, nothing. Sure. We just want that, you know, so with that being said, what are, what are, what are maybe one or two things you would love to see in the next 15, 20 years in Tippecanoe County that you, maybe it's just kind of been in the back of your mind? Sure. Uh, you know, I've had conversation with my friend Robert Cagle before. Oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Cagle, with, yeah. With the Ashley Furniture. I actually worked this summer at Ashley. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah man. Great so, guy, man. Love Mr. Robert and, Cagle. And, you know, they have industry all over the world. Oh, sure. And uh, this is kind of the gold star. They say the people of Tippa County, their values, their hard work oh, ethics. Oh, man, yeah. Um, so if people will just come here and give a chance, continue sure, sure, to, sure, sure, sure. Uh, as as these students grow up to be sure. entrepreneurs, there's, there's no better place to start sure. your business, sure. uh, your new venture, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than right here at home with kind yeah. of the salt yeah. of the earth type folks. I, 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 I fully agree with that. So if I'm hearing you correctly, um, what, what you would love to see um, is, is more jobs, sure. more better pay. Who doesn't want that? Yeah. Um, so... You know, and and that's something um, that I personally feel like um, if if like I think you said it best because we we you know we always feel like we're we are the run of the litter and it's good to be the run of the litter a lot yeah. of times. Um, but if people would just give us a chance mm-hmm. and they would just come and see, experience the community, industries come talk to leaders in the community, talk to the workforce, mm-hmm. see. Um, what's here and available for them, I think that they would be more than glad that they did, that they moved it to Ripley. Um, So, man, thank you so much. So with that being said, hey, thank you all so much for um, engaging with us. And, man, we're looking forward for uh, the next seven uh, down the road. Hey, and always, all of Tippecanoe County, go Tippecanoe County, but go Tigers. Uh, <laughs> so with, Good luck. In the yeah, yeah. So w- just two more questions on that end. Um, I know that that wrapped up our uh, halftime show, but w- one thing that I've noticed in conversations, mm-hmm. um, and, and I know, I think you said you were 38, correct? Mm-hmm. You, were, you were 38 years old? Me? 35, yeah. 38, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 53, yeah, 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 yeah. so kind of inverted. Yeah, yeah I, always tell my, I always tell people when they meet me for the first time, and I'm with my dad, I always say, hey, this is my granddad. So there anyway, so anyway, but with that being said, you, you've, you've said in, in the interview that, you know, you've, you've been a pastor, which is mm-hmm. a jack of all trades. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure you've done a little bit of everything in a church yeah, building. Sure. Um, you have been uh, public relations, um, Blue Mountain College. Now you're the president of MTS, yeah. which uh, which is an esta- How many years has it been a seminary now? Um, it started back in the 1800s I'm about to in say, a rural I, setting, I, but in Memphis since 1965. Yeah, I knew it was uh, an older seminary. Um, you sold Caterpillar parts, correct? Yeah, equi- you, equipment, heavy equipment, so, equipment. So, Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you've done a little bit of everything. And this is something that um, I talk to students all the time. And a guy actually, one of... Um, one of the guys that poured into me one of the, the most in a year outside of my father, mm-hmm. he was a pastor that I was under. And I'll never forget, man, he pulled me aside and uh, he said, look, besides telling me that the next, he said the next six months, the only thing you need to worry about is, is where the bathroom is and how to be quiet. Yeah. And so he, he said, we brought you here to learn and invest in you. So calm down. So, but with that being said, he also said, Man, you're 23 years old. You mm-hmm. feel like you need to have everything figured out by yeah. the time you're 23 and a half. He's like, man, what if you try different things and work hard till you're 39 and then finally you say, hey, I could do this for another 30 yeah. years and then retire at 69 or 70 or whatever. So what would you say to the to the person in the high school or middle school or mm-hmm. even mi- early to mid-20s? What yeah. would you say um, about um, working different positions and, yeah. and, and, and seeing the ebb and flow of how you grew in each and everything and that you don't have to know exactly what you want to do yeah. um, at, a, at such a young age. Yeah, I think that's important, your work at the, in the school district, uh, working with uh, 
people trying to determine what's my mm -hmm. future going to look like, what a careers. I think the generation, for for better or worse, sure. of people working somewhere for thirty years. That's you're not going to so see that foreign. as much. Yeah. Man, that you know, because right. that just is a common thing back then. That you yeah. talk to people like I worked at Caterpillar That's for forty right. years. That's I worked right. at Old Drive for forty years. And, and that it, and I and I've said that before. Like that's kind of a thing of the past sure. now, in yeah. a sense. So it takes a while, you, and that's okay for you to sure. figure out. And and what I think you'll and certainly I apply it from my faith background too. Sure, absolutely. it seems like every step along the journey or different experience I had in my career fed into what I'm doing sure. now. So. You know, yeah. being in sales in Caterpillar when, what when are, I was in the St. Louis area. You know, this so. this is just kind of hit me. What are two things, though? I know you've done uh -huh. different. What are two two or three things that, regardless of what you were doing, mm -hmm. needed to be needed to be shown in the workplace that you were in, or maybe two or three traits that you carried? It didn't matter if you were selling heavy machinery, you were a pastor, or you were president of a seminary. I needed these traits. This this kind of durable skills, if you would mm -hmm. say, to succeed regardless of where I'm at? Oh, that's a great question. And and certainly we think of our academic needs sure, uh, going yeah. through, but but so important too is the emotional intelligence, meaning oh, man. our people skills. Wow. How do yeah. you talk to people? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you, you know, I, I have another book coming out on leadership. And do you? I have, I have 10 leadership principles when, when oh, I was uh, working on my doctor of ministry sure, at sure, New sure. Orleans Baptist okay. uh, Seminary. But those, those traits of leadership, uh, the L is listening, communication, sure. E, eyes on the horizon, be a visionary, mm -hmm. A, all hands on deck. Okay. Don't fear change, uh, yeah. easy wins, be thankful, sure, be yeah. grateful. Uh, you know, uh, remember to get ready, aim, and then fire. Have a plan for sure, what you're doing. Yeah. And the last four, Austin, uh, are the words leadership or ship. And, and I tell people these are kind of like a a rudder on a boat, you know, sure. or, or it's unseen and it's small, sure. or even the propeller small to the larger vessel. But without it, you're not moving on to your desired exactly. future. So these last four principles that I try to teach to young people and people of all ages sure. uh, that spell ship, servanthood, humility, integrity, and prayer. If you can body, embody those along with, you know, sure. trying to grow academically, sure. uh, you're going to have that skill set yeah. to thrive and succeed sure. no matter what your chosen career is. Well, you've got me sold on it. I'm going to pre-order ah. pre it when it comes out on <laughs> okay, Amazon. Good. So I'm excited. I, I may get an autograph because I know you the, bet, I know the author a little bit. Um, but, you know, this is something that I always just, I, I, and I just can't get over it. Maybe because, and this is not false humility, I'm yeah. ju I just, a lot of times I don't feel very competent. I don't, I, you know, maybe uh, for whatever reason. Um, but every time I talk to yeah. people like you've been in different industries and succeeded in different spheres, um, and, and and even Mr. Robert Cagle and sure. other people, um, the things that they are looking for that's right. are not things that anyone can't do. That's right. Like it, like I, I, as I told my son the other day, there's a reason Daddy's not an engineer. Yeah. Okay, there's gotcha. a, there's a you know, and that's Me a too. skill yeah. to be learned, and sure. that, and then you have to you know, and, and it takes a particular mind to do that. Yeah. But anyone can have humility. That's right. Anyone can listen. I mean, like you said, I mean, it just, it, it, it so blows my mind when I talk to industry leaders and they say, you know, oftentimes the reason people are not hired or promoted, mm -hmm. which that's what we're trying to do. We, yeah. For young people particularly, we want to get, make, we want to, we want to, we want to uh, sharpen and develop people that yeah. are employable and promotable. That's it. And the reason why they're not employed or promoted rarely has to do with competencies, that's but exactly. has to do with attitude. Yeah. And it just it just baffles me. So, um, I thank man. I'm so excited to to read that book. But last question on 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 ending this kind of uh, this interview up is what uh, you you like I said you've you talked to seminary students. You've been mm -hmm. at Blue Mountain College. You talked to college students. You're a pastor. You've got young people in your church. Um, you've had your own kids. Yeah. Uh, so two questions on that. What one. What are what are some things that you would? I'll ask you the first one yeah. first, and then we'll go. But what what are some things that you would encourage young people um, to think about when pursuing a career path? Yeah, um, you know, we talked about the interpersonal skills, sure, the sure, sure. emotional intelligence, but also I would encourage them to to have confidence. Here's an example: my son Noah, who has a hearing impairment, he's kind sure. of a rock star because he's he's really excelled, overcame that, played college baseball at Blue Mountain. Sure. And this May, or next May, 
he'll be finishing up dental school. I thought he was going into dental school. Wow. You know, as he's considering, Austin, a career path, uh, certainly so many people going in the medical field are leaning toward those urban settings. Sure. But if you really want to build a business, my dear friend and departed church member, oh, Morris Howell, man. you know, he used to say, look, if you really want to build a business, find you a local community sure. you can establish your practice in. Uh, you'll be able to pour into them. They'll pour into you. Yeah. So the opportunities are there. And I, and I know many of our young people, they're driven towards success. Sure. Uh, they want to they want to bank some money, and we get that. But yeah. the opportunities are certainly there to do that within sure. our community. You know, and I, and I don't want to get off topic. So I have yeah. one more, one more sub-question to that. Um, but I, I would be remiss to say, I know because we've talked about um, even like Mr. Bobby Martin, who yeah. we loved and many, My dear friend, and he yeah. felt a sense of weight and he felt a sense of responsibility sure. to pour into all of Tibba County. Yeah. Like it wasn't just his family. He just felt this inward responsibility to do that. Sure. And, and this is something people don't know um, that Mr. Howe would randomly send me messages on Facebook just trying to encourage me. Yeah. Um, hey, Austin, I, I saw what you wrote or I saw what you put. I really was encouraged by that. Man, praying for you. If you ever need anything, you know where I live. Yeah, that's um, I know that he even, when, when the wellness center went down, this was when I was a kid. Wow. Um, we wrote, they had the swim team and man, they called him and we used to, we swam at his indoor wow. pool. Um, the swim team did just, you know, and it just, it always just baffled me because you know, other than just seeing him when I saw him, sure. we really didn't um, have a lot of mutual circles, even though we were Tibbacountians. He felt uh, a, a sense of responsibility to encourage yes. a younger Tibbacountian. And, yes. and I think that's very true of a lot of people from Tibbacountian. County. Yeah. So I didn't mean to get off. No, as I'm soon as you said his name, sure. I just thought, I mean, in the last, you know, in the last year and a half, he's probably sent me five or six messages wow. just detailing something I wrote or something. Um, he heard I did, or oh, I mean, wow. and it was I was just right. like blown away by. It. I mean, because this, this is a dentist; he's a well accomplished man. Sure. He's got his own family, sure. and uh, yeah, it just I mean, it just meant the world to me. So, man, thank God for his family. But with that being said, last question is: um, you've got kids. You've ar- you've already hit a point that I wanted to ask yeah. you about about encouraging your son to bring his dentist, dental practice here. Yeah. Um, what would you? Uh, how would you? Now that you you're encouraging your son to think about, hey, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but you can make a good living here. Um, what would you say to young people that are finishing um, that that professional degree or mm-hmm. finishing a degree in general? Um, what would you say to them that young t- t- young to mid twenties, maybe even to late twenties, um, encouraging them to move back? Yeah, I think the opportunities are there, as we've mentioned. Sure. If you want to establish mm-hmm. some type of business here within the mm-hmm. county. We certainly welcome that, applaud that. And sure. through your efforts and, and those of our local leaders, you're going to have the support to, sure. to um, jump in there with you in the trenches. But if you are still attracted to spending some time in that urban setting, I think you can have the best of both worlds. As you mentioned, we are centrally located. Yes. So you're an hour drive to Memphis, Tupelo, a couple of hours uh, you know, to Huntsville, sure. Birmingham, Atlanta. So uh, you can really achieve that by living here, having your roots sure. where people believe in you mm-hmm. and in a community you believe in and mm-hmm. uh, the sky's the limit. Man, well, with that being said, I know, I know we have uh, probably exceeded our time. I know we could talk a lot more um, after afterwards, but I just want to say for my end, um, thank you, Mr. Mm-hmm. Jody Hill. We appreciate you as a Tippecanian. It is it is a uh, it is a it is an honor uh, and a privilege uh, to uh, to be in a, a somewhat of a category with you as a oh, Tippecanian. Um, so, man, continue to fight the good fight, and don't forget to order that book. It'll be a All good right. one. I know it will be. So, hey, hey, have a good day. Thank y'all so much. Uh, and like I said. Go Tibbet County, all sports, but really go Tigers and go Miss Hood. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hey there. Did you know that every week radio reaches 90% of all people with disposable income? That's more than any other media. The fact is, radio is the number one most effective and cost-effective ways to reach current and potential customers. If you have a business, service, or event you want to let folks know about, put it on the radio. 
If you want to tell our dedicated Shark listeners about your business or event, click advertise at shark102.3.com and put it on the radio.